Um, good morning, and um, today we'll be speaking about a means. Apologies for having to record this video, by the internet at the moment is a little bit dodgy. So I'm afraid that if I were to host a live session, I might not be able to have a full lecture and or it keeps on cutting and interfering. So I do think that this is the best option. It's going to be a two part series, part A and part B. And because I only have two half an hour time slots where I will be uploading the first, first, the first part. And whilst you are listening to this first video, you should then get an upload for the second video as well. Okay, so today we're gonna speak about a means and their derivatives or at least we're gonna start this chapter, okay? A brief introduction, and then we are going to spend the next three to four weeks going into a bit more detail about the mechanisms, reactions, why they're important, where we use them. Um, and if you, have, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to send me a message, send me an email and ask me, okay? I will be available even, even during the time slot where we have the lesson. Okay, so don't worry about not being able to ask me questions. Stop the video, send me a question, and I will be able to answer immediately. So, A means they are all around us, okay? And therefore, because they are very found in nature, then we would, should be able to replicate them, okay? One of the prob probably the most common A mean that you might be used to as ecstasy, okay? Not, be, not hopefully you're used because you use them, but you're used because you've heard a lot about it, okay? Um, but then you also have adrenaline, which is very important, and especially in scare situations. For me, these scare situations would have been speaking to a girl my age, who I would want to date, and I used to have a rush of adrenaline, and probably go running away from the situation. Okay, but there are a number of different structures. Probably now, penicillin is one of the most important substances in the world. Yes, penicillin will not kill COVID, but antibiotics can be used if you have complications. Okay, so in industry, we can use amine and amines and nylon. Okay, and in fact, nylon is an amide bond. It is an amide bond. This is a reaction between an amine and a hydroxylic acid. Okay, what they use is 1,6-hexane diamine and hexane dioxide acid. It's better than using the 6-amino hexanoic acid, okay, because that will polymerize on its, own, on its own, and here you need to mix the two items together first. Apart from that, even the chain length would be a little bit different, but the, even that depends on the condition, that depends on the number of items, okay? And this is nylon 66. So, how about naming? So, naming is not that difficult, okay, as long as you do it properly. So, if you have a primary amine, the amine goes at the end. Of, at the end. Okay, especially if you have a primary amine and the amine is dual substituent. The amine will go at the end, and then you simply add methan. For example, if you have methanamine, one methan. So it's not an ile. So you name the bar, the, the alkyl chain, but instead of having the normal ile, it's an un. Okay, the un, the an, also represents that you have an alkene. So if you have an alkene, there's gonna be an in, and you might also want to write where that in is. So for example, let's go with the namings, the example here or the primary amines. Met, so this would be a metanamine. Here we have two methyl propyl. So that will be two methyl, one propan amine. Now that one is very important because that one will actually give you the position of your group. That one will tell you your amine group is on carbon number one, but have also been on carbon number two. Okay, here we have trans, 
you've done the naming as well, so it's an R. So it's R trans three pent in to amine. So the amine group is number two, the double bond is number three. I know some students would have presented as R trans pent three in to amine. The double bond is normally written beforehand, but because you have two functional groups, then I would have accepted both. Okay, for example, here in the naming, you have the amine but written in front instead of the no, of the amine itself. I don't mind whichever one you use, as long as it's clear which one you're recording. Okay, and then you have benzenamine. So aniline is benzenamine, though this is most commonly referred to as aniline. You can also have secondary amine. Okay, you can also have secondary amines. And the shortest chain, we write it with a prefix N, methyl ethanine. So the N shows that you will have a group attached to the nitrogen. The N shows that you have a group attached to the nitrogen. And this is very, very important. Okay, and the ethanamine, once you remove the methyl group, you name it as if it were a primary amine. You can also have more than one substituent. You have two substituents, and that would be a tertiary amine. So in this case, for example, that would be an N-dimethyl-1 propanamine. Okay, so same system, but you have two groups on the nitrogen, which means that you would need to actually Okay, you would need to actually know that you have two groups on the nitrogen, therefore you write N, N. As a substituent, it's called the amino group. So, if you have a higher priority group, it will be the amino group. Okay, so for example, this compound, if we remove the amino group chain, it is benzoic acid. On position number four, there's a substituent, which is an amino ethyl. The amino is on position number two. So remember, we always start counting in these situations from carbon number one. Okay. And carbon number two. So that is actually very, very, important, okay? That is something that you would need to keep in mind. You can also have methylamine and trimethylamine. Now, these I don't normally like as much. These are not the UPEC names, these are the common groups, okay? So I'd rather have methanamine or NN dimethyl methanamine. But if you're going to go and buy it from a shop, you will probably find it with the common names. And the common names make it a lot easier. So for example, this one here, okay, it's a lot easier like this than it would have been, okay, had you tried to name it properly. Benzyl, cyclohexyl, methylamine. And colloquially, that is what you're gonna find, okay? Colloquially, that is what you would find, okay? Now, let's speak a little bit about the physical properties. Amines are tetrahedral. Why? Because the nitrogen have three groups, three bonds, and the lone pair. And this means that this is a tetrahedral structure. As a tetrahedral structure, it can therefore have chirality. But in, in a means, in the nitrogen containing compounds, there, there is inversion between one side and the other. Why? Because it's a lone pair and the lone pair can flip. The, the electrons are gonna move. And this inversion requires around five to seven kilocalories per mole. Normally, this is something that you would have at room temperature. So this inversion happens constantly at room temperature, okay? But 
you can have racemic mixtures. So even if you were to try and prepare one structure only, okay, even if you were to have the R or the S, this will not happen. Why? Because there is a version. Okay? And this version goes between sp3 hybridized and sp2 hybridized nitrogens. The sp3 is more stable, therefore it will stay as sp3 at the end of the day, but it can go from one to the other. Okay? At this point, though, we can say that A means cannot be chiral. Now, this is not completely true because it depends on the bulkiness of the groups. Okay? So if you have a very bulky group on your amine, pH, pH with NO2, pH with CH3, for example, that is normally stuck in place. Okay, that is normally going to require too much energy to rotate. And therefore, at this point, you must be knowledgeable that it would be a kind of structure. You can also have a means that are going to be, for example, in some sort of cyclic compound. There, it might also be loaded in place. So these are things that you have to know. These are things that you have to use. Okay. Now, basicity, amines are basic. They have the low number of electrons and these are going, can, can be easily donated, okay? In fact, amines are much, much, much better nucleophiles than alcohols, okay? Both have long pairs. But they means are better nucleophiles than alcohols. Okay? And the reason for this is that this, the lone pair is highly available. The nitrogen is not pulling the, the electrons closer to it. Okay? It's highly available. And here, you end up in a situation where you can produce salts. If you're going to compare primary amines versus secondary amines, Okay, secondary amines are going to be a lot more nucleophilic. Okay, the lone pair of electron, due to hyperconjugation, is going to push electrons a little bit towards the nitrogen. There's going to be the nitrogen going to be a little bit more electron rich, and therefore it's going to be much, much more nucleophilic. If we were to go to tertiary, tertiary did it the nucleophilicity will decrease because in tertiary amines you will have some repulsion. You will have some steric hindrance. And this steric hindrance will stop the quaternary salt from forming. It will still form, but it's not going to be as easy as with primary and secondary. Now, ammonium salts are conf configurationally stable. So ammonium salts they can form chiral compounds, okay? As we've said before, you can have resumization of tertiary amines, but as soon as you add the quaternary salt, this is gonna be a fake in shape. This is actually going to form an ion if it's in a, an organic solvent, that's will normally crystallize out. These two resumates, this resumate, okay, these two enantiomers can then be resolved by something like fractional distillation, ah, fractional crystallization. Or you can use chromatography, it has to be specialized, okay? Or normally you don't really, you might not really care about whether you have the R or the S, okay? But if, if separation is important, Normally, first you try to crystallize, okay? So if it doesn't, have, doesn't work, there are a number of different means. This is something that for those who are visiting for synthetic organic, organic chemistry, you will be discussing this a lot more detail in that module. Since nitrogen is less 
electronegative than oxygen. Nitrogen will have weaker hydrogen bonds than OHs. And this gives ammonia a boiling point of minus 33.4. Now, this boiling point is still much higher than what you would expect without the hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that is something that we still need to keep in mind. Because normally, let's say methane, okay, let's speak about methane. Methane has a boiling point of minus 161 degrees. Okay, methane has a boiling point of minus 161 degrees. So, if you were to compare aim, ammonia, and methane, very similar masses, okay? Methane is 16, ammonia is 17. So they should have very similar boiling points. But this is going to be much higher. Why? Because of hydrogen bonds. But compared to water, This is going to be much lower, okay? So we can see that the electronegativity plays a massive important role, whether something is gonna be, have a high boiling point or a low boiling point, okay? Important, only primary aim, secondary aim means can function as proton donors. Because to be a proton donor, you must have a proton. Hopefully that is understandable. Now, I would not normally tell you, go and look up the boiling points and melting points for, for example, methylamine, dimethylamine, ethylamethylamine, but at that point you are also increasing the weight drastically. So the trends might not be as crystal clear as you would expect, okay? So don't do that. Acidity and basicity. Basicity. Okay? So, acidity means losing the proton. Now, you might be surprised to know that amines can lose a proton. It has a pKa of around 35. Now, pKa is the bigger the pKa, the weaker the acid, okay? The bigger the pKa, the weaker the acid, okay? So you would need to know that, okay? But when we compare this pKa to something like that of an alkane, I believe the pKa of alkanes is around 40. I'm just looking it up right now to confirm it. Alkanes is around 50, alkenes is 43, alkynes is 25 pKa's. And remember, between pKa 50 and pKa 49, it's going to be at times 10. So amines are 10 to the power of 15 times stronger acids than the average alkenes. Now, this is something that you have to keep in mind. Why? Because if you are adding an acid, now, if you are adding a very strong base, you can deprotonate the amine before you deprotonate your alkane. Okay? But it is a weak acid. So, to prepare the salt, you normally use something like LDA, lithium diazopropyl. Amide, oh, there is a profile amine. And this is a very, very strong base. Okay? This is a very, very strong base. And this will then be actually a bit to extract. 
pretty much protons form from most most acids. They have to be acids that are weaker than itself in order not to be able to extract it from them. Because remember, the conjugate base is going to be inversely proportional in strength to the acid. So here, in fact, even to prepare it, we use a salt of an alkene. Okay? Um, this is butyl lithium. Now, butyl lithium is a very, very strong base. In fact, it's one of the strongest bases that we know of. Why? Because it is the base, the conjugate base of a very weak acid, an alkane, butane. And therefore, because you have this conjugate acid, now the, the acid being very weak, the conjugate base would be very, very, very strong. In order to prepare sodium amide, sodium amide, you can do it with sodium and ammonia. You use Fe3 plus and the sodium will interact, okay? And take one proton from each ammonia and form the amide. Again, this is a very, very strong base base okay so pay attention whenever you're using these they have to be for example in inert conditions why because if they are not if they are not in inert conditions they will react with the water in the air some of them for example butyl lithium might even burn in air okay it might burn because it's going to have some energy to react with the water in the air that produces an exothermic reaction which can then React the butane that you're producing, you have an alkene chain there with oxygen, okay? And you start the fire. And it's very difficult to stop. And if you have butyl lithium, the one thing you should never add is water, okay? Cover it and let it, if still you have a fire, cover it, let it burn under a sheet, okay? Under a blanket, for example, or you can use fire extinguishers, especially ones where you have CO2. Okay, or but never water or sand and call for help. Acidity is then something a little bit different for the ammonium ions because the ion will want to lose the proton and in fact and in fact this would have around pKa of 10. Okay, so the ions will want to lose the proton. So these are, again, these are the conjugate acids of a weak base. Now, you might tell me, but why is the PKA not gonna be higher than be one or two? Because they will want to lose it completely. Ammonium salts do exist, and ammonium salts are very stable. So do expect, do expect that they're gonna have something there, okay? They're gonna be around 10. They're not weak, weak. They are just simply a weak acid, okay? So it's something where in solution it will give you some H plus, but it will not fully dissociate. And if you're gonna compare the ammonium ions, you have ammonium on its own, it's 9.24. So it's the best acid, but as you increase the steric hindrance or as you increase the methyl groups, first the PKA increases, meaning that it's becoming a better base, okay? Or the conjugate base is a better base, so it will keep the H+. But once you have too much steric hindrance, you have three methyl groups, then the PKA increases again. Okay, so the H plus is pretty much pushed out. Literally, it is pushed out. If you have an alcohol and you present it an alcohol, okay, because alcohols, they want to be as an ROH, they are much weaker bases, you would have a PK of around minus three. That H plus is very easily lost. And with PKAs, 
you might not be familiar with the scale, but it doesn't go to zero. It can go to very, very negative numbers. If you have PKAs of something like HI or H, HI is minus 10, HBR is minus 9, HTL is minus 6. So if you request it, it's minus 3. So something that is a protonate, protonated alcohol would be as acidic as sulfuric acid. But then it's very difficult to actually keep it there. Okay, so it's very difficult to prepare a solution of protonated ethanol. Carboxylic acids have around a pKa of around four. Okay, protonated protonated means between nine and eleven, and then water would have a pKa. I have it as it here as fourteen. Alcohol is seventeen, so we can see that here it's going to be something where these values you do not need to know. Just need to know which is stronger or weaker. Okay, so the smaller the number, the stronger the acid. For pKb, it would be the same thing. Okay, but remember pKa and pKb they are not. I mean they they can be related in water, but normally we find them separately. So the basis it decreases when the lone pair is less available. So if the lone pair, we have groups that are gonna be pulling electrons away from the um, lone pair, that means that it's gonna make a weaker base. If it's a weaker base, it's gonna be a stronger acid. And we can see the tri two hydroxy ethyl amines. Okay, I think that would be the name there. You have a pKa of 7.75. If you have the aniline salt, it's going to be 4.63 because the lone pair is going to go into the ring. Lone pair is localized. So, so that's available, okay? If you have cyclohex, cyclohexanamine, you have 10.66, which is the norm to expect for a secondary, okay? Or a primary amine. It's not as normally it's a bit lower as we've seen here. No, actually it's 10.62. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. And if you have an amide, amides are in fact not gonna be the same as an amine. Okay, amide will consider them a little bit further down the road as being different. Amides are gonna have a different structure. Nitrile groups are gonna have sp hybridized. So if it's an SP hybridized and you're gonna protonate it, it's gonna be acidic. Okay, similar to all kinds. And SP2 hybridized, again, it's gonna be a little bit more acidic than an alkane. So SP hybrid SP3 hybridized, but not as acidic as SP. So remember, there's always increase in, increase in acidity between SP3, SP2, and SP. The more the S character is showing. Okay, the more the X character is showing, the more you will end up having acidic character. Okay, so for this first part, we're gonna stop here. And I will be sending you another video with the second part, which will be about synthesis and some reactions. Again, I will be speaking about these reactions in a little bit more detail individually. For today, we're just doing an overview. There are some mechanisms, I believe, but don't worry too much about them. We're going to be speaking about these mechanisms in a lot more detail. Thank you.